Hey guys, this is Captain Phoenix back from the action, and as you can see on the thumbnail, this is my top 10 favourite duels from the original Yu-Gi-Oh! series. This was requested by JX Brennan, and I thought, you know what, this would be good, I might, and I'll do this for the other series as well, that I've watched so far. I haven't watched Sevens yet. So for the first minute, I'm just going to talk about what I'm going to do and how it's done. So this list is my own list, my own personal list thoughts of what these why these duels are the top 10 and what I like about them and like what they're about and all the images are from the series series itself you know, obviously the all credit of those images go to the pe to the producers who made them and all that you know you know I don't I'm only showing I'm only showing my duels and just giving a visual aid really so I'll let just wait another five four three two one. Now, for the 10th duel, I have Yuga versus Pegasus round two. This duel is one of my favourite ones, and this was a, and this is actually a tricky one because I had someone else, but I decided to choose this one as the 10th one. This was a tricky list to do. Now, this duel takes place during episode 35 to 39, and uh, this is where Yugi finally faces Pegasus to become the king of games, and... Uh, and to save his grandpa, Kaiba, and Morkaba's souls. And the duel was tricky. As you know, when Peg Pegasus reads the minds of his opponents using his Millennium Eye, and uh, that gives him an unbe almost an unbeatable advantage. But luckily, Yugi figured out how to defeat Pegasus for two ways. The first one was he kept switching places with the spirit of the Millennium Puzzle with him, so that way, when he played a card, Peg they would swap places because the other one wouldn't know what the what the card is. Except, so that way, Pegasus couldn't know what the card is as well, which is actually quite clever. <clears throat> but then, when Pegasus entered them into the Shadow Realm, he then he knew that Yugi in this state, Yugi would be too weak to to keep switching places with him. But luckily, then Yugi and his friends found a way to block Pegasus's mind probing powers, and they managed to beat him using Karibo and Dark Magician, Magician of Black, the Magician of Black Chaos. And it was just one of my favorites. And after that, you learn a little more about Pegasus, which I respected about it. And it was honestly, it was just a really done, well done duel, especially how they proved how two minds. You can't just beat someone like that on your own. You have to rely on the, those who you know can help you. Right, so for the ninth, number nine, we have Joey versus Solomon. Now, this is this starts at episode 182 and ends at 100... And, sorry, 187 and 188. My apologies. And I really like this duel because we never actually saw Solomon duel. We only saw him on the first episode, but we know he lost against Kaiba, and uh, Ka and Yugi used his grandpa's deck that had the five pieces of Exordia in. An ex another excellent duel, I wish it. And uh, we managed to see him summon the Ancient Dragon card, which Solomon's friend Arthur does explain that this is actually a card that was never able to be summoned officially. Because it requires so many pieces to actually summon it, and it's almost unbeatable, which is what made the card even more interesting. And you can tell that Solomon really had fun in the duel either way. This duel was to actually test Joey, since Solomon was the one teaching Joey how to finally duel everything he knew properly. He used tactics that Joey would be able to, would use, like the dice rolling card. Um, and other and other cards really just to stop him from trying to and I guessing I can't remember the trap card's name, but it's where you have to guess a monster spell a trap. If you guess right, your monster attacks. If not, I think it returns to it returns to the player's hand. And the way and he passed, obviously Joey passed because he wins the duel, but he gave and Solomon did give him a passing grade. And that's what I respect. Respect a lot about Solomon. He's like a geeky, he's a proper geeky old man nerd, but he's one of those people you can always, he's one of those people you just like straight away. Now then, 
for round for number eight, we have Yuga versus Joa and the Big Five. So I read you, Yugi and Joey versus the Big Five, episode 111 to 113. If I'm, and I'm literally gonna have to double check this. Now this duel takes place during the season three, uh, season three, and this is where we have the deck master rules. Since Tristan lost his body to a member of the Big Five, and he wanted to leave, but the rest, but the other four lost their duels. They want. Noah, the main villain of the, the second main villain of the time, made a rule that all five of them will share Tristan's body to, to duel against Yuga. And since, uh, but then Joey joined in, so it was five versus two. So each player chose their deck masters. Yuki chose uh, Dark Magician. Joey chose Flame Swordsman. But the big five rot rotated their players and their deck masters so they could uh, in Tristan's body. Which is a clever strategy because the duel can take its toll on your opponent, but if you have, to, but if you're in a team of multiple people, you can keep switching out so you can freshen out, to keep freshening out, such so as clever. And we see the five-headed dragon again, which was really awesome again. But then we saw a berserk dragon. But my favorite part of the duel was dark magician knight. And once that destroyed it. And as the rules for the deck master, when Berserk Dragon was destroyed and, and it was the Big Five's deck master, all five of them automatically lost. I don't I like the deck master rules, but that but they'd have to have certain cards being deck masters and they'd have to like add like a, cards in to give them their own deck master rules. And that'd be a lot of editing. So again, this was just a really good one, and it was hard to put this on number eight, really. Now, for number seven, and it, and this was a tricky one as well, Yugi versus Joa, round two. I was going to think the first round in the Duelist Kingdom era, but I decided to choose the second one when Joey gets brainwashed by Merrick's Millennium Rod and then and then faces Yugi and then an attempt. But in the end, it is just Yugi on his own this time. What I liked about it is how even... How pressured Yugi was to actually try and help Joey. And we see that Joey's deck got modified. Because we see him using really rare damaging cards. And Kyber even said there was no way that some Joey had cards that danger that powerful in his deck originally. Which makes sense since Merrick was controlling since Merrick took control of Joey, he'd most likely modify Joey's deck with some of the cards him and his rare hunters have. But the end of how they were going to end the duel was dark. Literally, both chained to an, an to an anchor. Whoever whoever wins gets the key to unlock the cuff, the lock that's holding up, holding on their leg, and then the, the other one gets dropped to the bottom of the bottom of the of the lake of the ocean, which is very dark. Joey Kyber did though try and stop the duel, and then he did manage to break the chain. But then, in the end, they both took damage. But Yugi took damage to set Joey free. But then Joey got his red eye. I think it was his red eyes black dragon that attacked him. So they were both free. Joey was close to dying. But then Serenity, his sister Serenity saved his life when she got when she finally removed her bandages for her eyes. And it was a strong emotional duel. Which is some things I like about that season. There was a lot of more emotion to some of them. Especially to the final season. Which everyone knows why. Right, now, number six, we have Kaiba versus Siegfried. I believe, and this was episode 194 to 195. Now, this was, when was this? Um, beginning of season five, I believe, if my memory serves. It's been a while since I watched the original. Um, and it was just amazing, the duel. Um, Siegfried uses his Valkyrie deck, and Kaiba uses his Dragon Ape. XYZ deck, which was really amazing to see how close they were, but Kaiba always got the upper hand. It just showed that Kaiba was really good at what he did and how skilled he was at dueling. Like how he summoned his XYZ, his XYZ Dragon Cannon, but he, used a dimension, but he also used Soul Absorption, and it's a card I use for my deck. So every time you banish a month, 
a monster's banished, you gain 500 life points per banished monster. So when he banished XYZ, his XYZ monsters to get his fusion monster, he got back 1500 life points and got and got a powerful monster on the field straight away. And Siegfried was an interesting character because he, him and Kyber had rival companies, but you couldn't even say rival companies anymore because Kyber Corp became the top company and everyone and everyone got and everyone just forgot about the, the Schroeder Corporation. It was still a corporation, you just didn't hear about it anymore, that much anymore. Once, like I said, once everyone, once Kyber, everyone knew about Kyber Corp and they became number one, everyone just forgot about the Schroeders. So Siegfried was trying to sabotage Kyber's tournament so it would make him look, his business loot company look bad and everyone would go to Siegfried Corporation instead. Which is, I can say it's a stupid plan. I would say that. Right, now, next round, and this was a tricky one. Number five being Yugi and Kaiba versus Darts. Now, this was a tricky one. These last five duels were really tricky to put in place, but the top one, everyone will agree with. This duel at the beginning was already insane because season four was an insane series, let's just say that, with the Shield of Orical Seal of Orichalcos, Yugi losing his soul to the seal when Atem when Atem uses uses the seal himself when uh, Raphael I think it's Raphael when he when he gave him the seal and you just see how broken Atem was when he lost Yugi but this duel was amazing because we got to see the legendary. The dragon, I can't remember its name, the fusion monster for Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon and Black Luster Soldier, which was amazing. And they could have won it in one ra in one attack, which was amazing, but then Darts Orichalcos monster absorbs attack damage. And then you had the what then you had the legendary heroes come forth with the legendary dragons. And then the final part after that duel was even more crazy. When you had a monster that was infinite, when you had a monster that had an infinity attack point, but then, a, but then, a Tem summons a monster with infinity plus attack, which makes no sense. Let's just say that that doesn't make any sense. But you know, it's an anime. Animes have always had power. You know, this animes have always had power balance issues. But it was just an amazing duel to see those two work together properly. They weren't, it wasn't like Battle City, it was like a proper duel where they knew you, they had to work together to win this. Right, so for number four, we have Joey versus Merrick, episode 125 to 128. Now, this duel was already crazy. You already know Merrick had the chance of winning it, but Merrick actually did a lot of faults in his design. And one of my favourite faults that Merrick did was when he had to guess what monster was in the bottom of his gra Joey's graveyard. Because Joey, because Merrick did set up a really damaging combo. Merrick did set up a damaging combo for Joey that he'd lose a monster, he'd lose a card every time in his hand, and he'd suffer life points because of it. But the question part was that he had to remember which of his monsters did he send first. And the worst part was, the card that was sent to the graveyard was chosen ram randomly by Help Poema, his fiend monster. So Merrick would never guess, Merrick basically could never guess it, get the right answer. And the monster was Jinzo, which actually destroyed his, which actually destroyed Merrick's combo. Because, as we all know, Jinzo has the power to neutralise all traps. And it was a close call, but then when Merrick summoned his Egyptian god in Phoenix form, used its a thousand, used its in, its Phoenix ability to destroy any monster in its path. Joey was severely damaged, but he was still standing, which should have been impossible. And Merrick was terrified because if he had some, because if uh, if Joey was able to summon a monster powerful enough, which he did, his um. Is uh, I can't remember the monster, but it was strong enough. But if he was able to attack Merrick, Merrick would have actually lost the duel, and he would have lost the Winged Dragon of Ra to Joa, 
Which would have been really, really cool if they did that. I would have loved that ending, but they couldn't. Now we've got number three. Yugi versus Kaiba, round three at Battle Setter. 129 to 134. This was a crazy duel, let's just say that, because you had two Egyptian gods fighting each other, two players who, who, are, prop, who are true rivals at each other, and then you have a... And even then, when one's got the other advantage, the other one bounces back up. It was literally a stalemate between Yugi and, between Yugi and Kaiba, which was crazy. And that's what I loved about this duel the most, that it didn't seem like the one per when one person had the advantage, the other one could come up with something that had a combo to bounce it, bounce it out. And the Egyptian god scenes where they both attack each other and neither one giving up, it just damaged they were both destroyed, but then both of them were still not over. They still had Dark Magician and Blue Eyes White Dragon. Yugi summons his his new Ace Monster, which is a fusion of Dark Magician and Buster Blader. Dif uses the final effect to play a diffusion to diffuse Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon back to Blue Eyes back to three Blue Eyes. He gains a number of attack points per dragon on the field. Then he then Yugi uses a I think it's Diffusion Wave Motion. You pay a thousand life points and then uh, you, your, your spellcaster monster can attack all the monsters on your opponent's field once. And that one and that one move beat Kyber straight away. Which was really it was a it was amazing. There's no other word for it. It was just a really amazing uh, duel. And honestly, it just had a there's no other word to describe it, honestly. I'm trying to think of other words. It was just a very balanced out duel between two rivals, but then it came down to whoever whoever flawed messed up badly. Now, number two, we have Yugi versus Merrick. This was a trick. Honestly, this one needed to go there because it was both dark and uh, thrilling at the same time. Because Merrick, we know how his combination. He sends Wing Dragon of Ra to the graveyard, then just keeps using cards to keep playing Monster Reborn to bring it back. But the problem was this duel was so close. It was... I'm trying to think of the right words. The duel was just insane. Yugi manages to summon both his Egyptian gods, the second one being Obelus the Tormentor, attacks Merrick directly... And damages him with 4,000 attack. And gets him down to 100 life points. Which was crazy. In just one move he did that. But then. But the problem was. In, was the stakes that Merrick put. That's his Merrick's rule in the shadow. When he plays a shadow game. He puts a stake there. And the stake was. If you if the Pharaoh loses. Yugi's soul's banished to the shadow realm. And if Merrick loses. His other half. His. The real Merrick gets sent to the Shadow Realm. But it ends a little bit quite nicely. I'm going to say that quite nicely. That Merrick, Merrick and his darker half swap places. So the real Merrick's free and the evil half's the victim now. And the evil half's begging Merrick not to, sur not to give up. That they can still win. But Merrick knows he can't. The only way for the Pharaoh to achieve his destiny is to have all three Egyptian god cards. So he then forfeits the duel he sur by placing his hand on his duel disc and, and surrenders. And by doing that, his life points will drop to zero. And then his dark, and then the darker half is then banished to the Shadow Realm forever. And I like the way it ended. It was just a good way to end it. That Merrick's showing his evil half. He's a, he decides it, his own fate. Now... For the first and the final best duel, the ultimate duel, Yugi versus Atem. Everyone who watched the final season, who has watched these last episodes, will know this was the ultimate duel to determine not only if not only if Yugi was the true king of games, but if the Pharaoh could return to his resting place forever this for good this time. Everyone was strongly emotional with this duel, and I don't blame them. I even cried myself as a true Yu-Gi-Oh fan when we saw the final episode and when we saw Yugi cry. 
Because many of us were so, like Yugi, were so focused on the duel of how balanced it out, how Yugi managed to achieve the impossible by defeating all three Egyptian gods at the time. And then uh, defeats Dark Magician. It was just the ultimate duel, seeing him use Gandora again. And uh, just using all the skills he learnt from the Pharaoh. How balanced the two were to each other. Even though they were separated, their decks represent each other's lessons that the other taught them. So in a way, they were perfectly balanced. But in the end, it took one of them had to lose. I'm going to spend a little more time with this, this part. But the best part was, the good part, thing about the stool was, for the Pharaoh, for a 10, by losing, his, he could finally go back to where he was always meant to go, where, to finally rest. Destiny brought them together to protect the world and save it once again from the return of the Shadow Games. And the lessons they both taught each other would stay with each other. And when you see him finally return to the afterlife with his thumb up, saying goodbye, seeing his friends from the past again, you just know it's uh, he's finally back where he belongs. And the worst part is in those situations, in real life, you miss your home away from home and the family that you make in that home. I'm trying to think, honestly, I'm actually getting a little emotional right now just thinking about that final moment. Everyone leaves and the Millennium items are lost. Also, we thought, you know, we, you know, watch the movie if you haven't. It's amazing. But it was just uh, the journey that it reminded us how far they, how far Yugi went, and how what the first moment we see them to the last moment we see them together, and then we have the movie which made it even more beautiful. It showed that even though there was an ending, there was another, there was still another chapter starting. Which is when we get the GX series, which thank the Lord it was made because that was an amazing series as well. Now comment down below what your favourite duels were and even put down like your top 10 duels. If you if you think there was other duels that I could profile like review, I don't mind reviewing them. I, would, I don't mind because that could be something for the channel as well, deck re um, duel reviews. And until then, this is Captain Phoenix. Over and out.